morning. Welcome to those who have gathered here in the great room at Good Samaritan National Campus, as well as those that are joining online um, later at this point, but soon to come in March, um, we should be back live streaming again. So, and a new whole method, learning the whole WebEx process, but I'm really hopeful for some opportunities that that's going to give us for connecting greater um, way with the field, maybe field folks being able to provide devotions kind of live with us. So I'm excited about some opportunities that we have uh, moving forward. I'm Bill Gren with Mission Integration. Um, don't see any other necessarily introductions. Um, one announcement that I would make, um, if you had emailed me for a booklet and a cross, I just sent an email out at the last minute waiting for the crosses to arrive, a day, arrive today. They didn't. Um, they should tomorrow. Um, but I didn't want you to wait for the booklet. So I have put the booklets here with a copy of your request on it. And um, if you want to take the booklet, you can, but leave the request there. And that will let me know what size cross to put by them. And as soon as they arrive, I'll put the, um, those crosses with the slips of paper, as well as any additional crosses. I think we're getting about 100 of them. So there will be some additional crosses. So you can feel free to take them. And when I called Patty this morning, she says, are you calling for more? And I go, well, no, we didn't get the second bun, but we do know that there's more there. So anyway, if you have them or if there's someone that you would like to give one to that you think they would appreciate it, um, feel free to do that. And there are extra devotional booklets there also. Um, so if you have someone that you'd want to share one of those with, you can feel free to take that. Um, thanks to Larry also in the studio this morning doing the directing. On our prayer list, we have our employees and those we serve in the locations of Thief River Falls, Minnesota, and Tracy, Minnesota. The department that we're lifting up are those that work in the area of fertility and reproductive medicine and all that those they serve. Um, prayers then for family and friends are those that are facing separation or divorce, and then the private prayer request in the prayer basket. Any additional either joys or concerns? All right, we'll have our prayer at the end. Have two different warm up questions um, this morning, and um, they actually came as I was reading through this week's um, devotional booklets. Our theme for the Wednesdays during March will be, um, or during Lent, um, including this Wednesday and then the next um, in March, we're using devotions from the Steadfast Love booklet and um, Christy and I will just kind of pick whichever one we want or a series of them to be able to use, um, but it will be based on that theme of steadfast love anyway. And um, the one that I picked out um, to use is actually the one for today. It's entitled Weeping for Us, but it talks, asks these two kind of questions, and so I invite you to think about them. When was the last time you laughed? In other words, so hard that tears came to your eyes and you thought you would never stop laughing. I struggled a little bit coming up with an answer on that for me, um, but it was, I think, watching my grandkids do some of their antics um, at one time or the other that um, probably comes closest to mind for me with that. Um, and then the kind of the flip side of that question is the second one, and that is, when was the last time you wept? In other words, truly wept to the point that your stomach hurt and your heart ached and you thought, when? Will it ever stop? And my guess is that if something comes to mind for you, what comes to mind is something related to some deep loss in your life. Um, and not sure what that loss could be. It could be in a variety of ways, either a loss of job or a loss of family member or whatever. It, losses can come in many shapes or forms. And, and two thoughts came to mind for me. One was the loss of loved ones, both when we um, had a stillborn child, and when I finally got around to grieving, um, didn't know if that grief would ever stop for me. Um, and then a similar thing happened to our daughter and son-in-law um, with the stillborn daughter and, and that depth of grief. Um, but the other one that came to mind for me was when I was working as a chaplain down in Lincoln, Nebraska, and working in the trauma unit and the cancer unit, and remember offering um, to sing a song um, with one of the patients, a younger woman who was in the process of dying, and um, she says, well, my favorite one is Amazing Grace, but if you start singing, I will start crying, and I will never stop. And I said, well, I don't have to sing. 
Um, but if you do want me to, um, I can sure share the song and I will commit to being here with you through your tears. And she wanted me to sing, the tears flowed freely and she did stop. And in the process, she found a great deal of healing of being able to give expression to that which was deep within her soul. Um, so for me, God gave us the gift of weeping in order to set us free one of my favorite quotes about crying is that I do it to keep myself from drowning. So to kind of let the water out and to keep ourselves from drowning with that. So a few thoughts uh, about weeping as well. Um, first of all, as noted, it is coming from today's devotional booklet, um, Steadfast Love. And just so you think the booklet is not all about weeping kind of things, other devotions for this week, um, titles were Proven Love, The Lamb of God, On Trial, Grab Hold, Poured Out, Sacrifice, and Connectedness. So there's lots of topics in the booklet for that. Um, and then the other thought that came to mind for me is that there were, there's one scripture from Luke 23, 28 that was included in the devotion, but the other one that came to mind for me was John 11, 35. One of those favorite Bible verses when kids are asked to memorize a Bible verse and they say, I'll take John 11:35 35 because it's only got two words. I can memorize that pretty easily. Um, and, and for me, it's an important one because it reminds me of how human Jesus was to weep at the grave of a friend to weep on behalf of those who are weeping. And so to recognize his being able to join us um, in our tears, for me, is a significant part uh, of the weeping for us. Um, but I also like the title of the devotion. It's called Weeping for Us. And I began to wonder, what does the us mean? Who, who, who are the us in that? And um, with, John, or with Luke 11, 23 to 28, it says, but Jesus turned to them and said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. And there were actually kind of three us's that came to mind for me that we'll share um, with you as kind of thoughts, and um, hopefully there will be at least something that might land for you that you might um, take with you um, during this Lenten season or at least for the day. And the first one was related to our weeping for Jesus, because Jesus says, you know, don't weep for me, and yet um, what it called to mind for me in terms of that thinking about weeping for Jesus, is the fact that um, when Bill Kubat was here, um, one of the things that he did for a number of Lenten seasons, and maybe some of you participated in it, is during the new lunch, he would have a brown bag lunch, and he would invite people to watch the Passion of Christ movie, and would just watch a half an hour of it, and, and did that over uh, a series of a number of days with that. In true honesty with you, I have never watched that movie. It came out the same year that I was finishing my years at um, Brian LGH in Lincoln, Nebraska, working in a trauma unit, working in a cancer unit, knowing that I had been told it is very graphic about the suffering of Christ and what he goes through in those last hours of his life, I have not been able to watch that. And in fact, I've not been able to watch any kind of movies that have any violence in it because it's too real to life. I saw it in the emergency room. I saw it far too often. And it's just like I couldn't go there anymore. And yet there is a truth that I think needs to land in all of our heads and hearts is that Christ did suffer greatly for his deep love for us. And in fact, this cross I wear, its first symbolism is the five wounds of Christ, the depth of his suffering for us. And one of the significant parts of this Lenten season is that reminder that God would love us so much that he would allow his son to suffer and die for us. What great love that must be. So a reminder of our weeping for Jesus is for me a reminder of that depth of love he has for us. But as Jesus says, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The 
a second us for me is others. And the now and quote um, that is in the little devotion book that says, if we want to mourn for Jesus, we have to mourn for the suffering humanity that Jesus came to heal. If we are truly sad because of the suffering and pain which he suffered, we will include in our sadness all of the men, women, and children who suffer in our present world. And what this devotion challenged me to consider is am I weeping for all of those men and women and children who suffer in our present world? And the authors of the devotional book that added these additional comments, he says, I think Jesus says to you and me, do you see what's happening around you? Do you see the neighbor next door sitting alone on the front porch? Do you listen to the news and hear my voice asking you to feel the pain of others as you weep and pray for them? This devotion challenged me to ask myself that question, am I weeping for others? Do I allow myself to know the hurt and the pain that others are going through in our world today? And am I allowing Jesus to speak to me through that weeping for others. And then just a final thought that came to mind for me as I was thinking about that weeping for others is just that phrase about Jesus weeping for the world. And I have often thought um, throughout this year of our polarization and our disunity that I think Jesus is weeping when I think about his prayer on the eve of his death, that they might be one. In his giving of that one commandment of love one another, and that people will know we're his disciples by our loving one another. And if we, if I am calling myself a Christian, Am I living that love or am I seeing Jesus weeping for our world? Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for speaking at least to me and, and hopefully maybe to others. of the depth of your love for us, of the depth of your love for others and your desire that we too might weep for them and share love with others. May you continue to be at work in our hearts and minds and lives throughout this season of Lent as we consider your word, your will, your way for us. I pray that your love and grace and mercy may also be at work in the hearts and the minds and lives of those that we have named on our prayer list, um, those in Thief River Falls, Minnesota, and Tracy, Minnesota, and all those that they serve those who are working in the Department of Fertility and Reproductive Medicine, and all those who are impacted by those challenges in their life. It can be a huge loss for many, and I just pray that you might bring healing and hope in and through those who are providing those care and services. We are also mindful of those who are going through a time of separation or divorce, and that uncertainty in their life May you bring your healing, your hope, your grace, your love. For anything else that we may be carrying in our heart or minds or things that we place in the prayer basket, we trust those to your care and keeping as well. And we pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. And receive this blessing of God's love for you as you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and fill you with his peace, now and always. Amen.